Hi, I'm Mark Richard, and you're listening to Pure Talk, the podcast where we talk about life, health, and living pure. On today's episode, we welcome a very special guest, Mr. Jim Pattison. From washing cars to private jets, Jim Pattison simply exemplifies a rags to riches tale. Hard work, kindness, and generosity are at the cornerstone of his success and his recent introduction into the Canada Walk of Fame. Jim tells us today about his humble upbringing, why Margaret Thatcher was one of the most inspirational public figures he's ever met, and how he built a $91 billion Canadian legacy. This is Pure Talk. Hi, Mr. Patterson. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to start with something uh, very simple in terms of, of work ethic. Uh, I think growing up, I believe I read an interview that your money, your family didn't have a lot of money at all. Um, so was it your, your parents' decision or was it your decision to go into the workforce at, at seven years old? Well, that was my decision. Yeah. Uh, at, uh, after school, I could make a few extra dollars and uh, by selling garden seeds and flower seeds because a lot of people in those days had their own gardens Mm -hmm. or they grew their flowers or vegetables right and so uh, that's how i first started to sell uh, things was uh, garden seeds and flower seeds right in saskatchewan correct no in vancouver oh okay great you moved to Vancouver in what year? Uh, 1935. Oh, okay. So you would have been about six? Sorry? You would have been about six? Six or seven? Well, I was, yeah, I was, I'd have been about, when I started to sell. Right. I was around seven, seven to eight. Yeah. Wow. That's so young. Um, and that, that hard work that you started off at seven years old, I mean, the difference between hard work and, and becoming successful, they don't really always correlate. So do you know what the difference is between those who, who work really hard and those who are successful? Why do, why do you think you became successful and others who work just as hard maybe don't, maybe don't make it? Well, uh, timing is important. Of course. And being in the r- right place at the right time. I yeah. was in Vancouver, which was, uh, the population was 300,000 when we moved here. Okay. And uh, from Saskatchewan. So uh, I was in a town that was in an area that was growing, mm-hmm. and um, things were were is a good place to be, and so that helps a lot. The timing, for sure. And so I believe you started washing cars. Is that how you got got into the car dealerships? That's how I got into the business. Is right. I actually was working for uh, Canadian Pacific as a pantryman in the dining car. Okay. And uh, they had a big flood in 1948, and they washed out both railways and the highway in the uh, Fraser Canyon. Yeah. And, uh, and so I came home and got a job washing cars at the corner of Camby and Broadway, a, used ca- a small used car lot. It was a gas station w- with uh, some used cars. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Richmond was my boss and owned the gas station. Oh, okay. And then it, you turn car washer to salesman. Then, then I was allowed to sell cars if they had one salesman. Right. His name was Art Davenport. And when he wasn't on the lot having dinner or lunch, or if he was out with a customer, I was allowed to speak to the customer only... Yeah. If he wasn't on the lot, he wasn't there. Yeah, and so the first week I sold three cars. Wow! And uh, I was very fortunate. So then they asked me if I wanted a full-time job, right? Selling used cars, and I did. So that's how I got started. It's incredible. I mean, what do you have any uh, magic tips to being a salesman? I mean, it has to be one of the hardest jobs there no, are. No, it's actually not. Uh, I found that most people respond to sincerity and if you're honest mm-hmm. and trustworthy and and you know what you're talking about right the customer will gain confidence in you 
And it's important that you don't break that confidence. Of course. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I'd say philanthropy has been a cornerstone of your career. Um, do you, can you speak to maybe the, the importance of that or, or what sort of causes or, or groups do you choose to, to give to? Well, we have a foundation right. with about 12 or 13 uh, directors. Okay. And uh, they decide where the money in the fund. They, they invest the money that mm-hmm. we put into the foundation and then they decide the foundation where the money goes. Right. But some of those causes have to speak speak you know closer to your heart as well right something that, that well you, some of the things we yeah yeah uh, we we support the things that have helped us over the years and right and uh, we continue to support those kind of things that's great uh you were recently inducted into the canada hall of fame <laughs> and there was a surprise visit from no, it uh, was the it was the uh it was the Canada Walk of Fame. I'm sorry, the Canada Walk of Fame. Yeah, Great. Canada Walk of Fame. Do you get to put your hands on some sort of road as well, like they do in Hollywood? Is there? <laughs> uh, well, you go through it. So it's a walk, and okay. I went through the walk. Great. Um, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there was a surprise visit from Warren Buffett. That's true. So now you and Warren are, are friends. Can you speak well, to how that started? Certainly, I, I certainly was most appreciative of the fact that he came up just for that event. Absolutely. Went home that night after dinner. Wow. Um, where did that friendship start? When, when did you meet? Uh, when did well, you meet I him? met him uh, several years ago uh, when I got invited to go to his meeting in Omaha. Okay. He has a big meeting once a year in Omaha. Right. And uh, I got included in that. And from then I got to know him a little bit. And... and uh, I have a huge respect for Warren Buffett is in a class all by himself. Absolutely. Of course he is. Um, in terms of speaking of businessmen, can you speak to maybe the, the, the difference between being a, a shark of a, a the, the shark of a businessman and also making everyone happy at the same time? Cause I think well, it's, I can't, it's hard def- to have both. I can't define a shark. <laughs> all I can tell you is that anything to do with customer, the customer is always the boss. Right. And once you understand who's the boss, then you do everything you can to uh, sincerely uh, try to be sure that the customer understands what you have. Mm-hmm. And you, as a good salesperson, need to understand what the customer's needs are. Because sometimes the customer doesn't know really what they need. Right. And you're an expert in, let's say in my case, it was transportation, cars. But uh, it's important to always be, put yourself in the customer's spot. Mm-hmm. And what can you do to help him knowing what you know? Right, right, absolutely. Um, I'd say you've met so many influential and, and powerful figures. Uh, is there one that stands out in your mind? Someone that you remember the most or someone who inspired you the most? Well, the, I think the two, I think uh, the three people that really made an indelible impression on me was Margaret Thatcher, mm-hmm. uh, Ronald Reagan, and of course, uh, George H.W. Bush right. and his family. Right. Right. Including Barbara. Yeah. Was, was, was Margaret as mean in person as she looks like in her photos? She is tough as nails. Yeah. Smart as a whip. And uh, is hugely impressive. Mm-hmm. She's, she's dead now. Yeah. yeah. But uh, in my time, I would say that she was the most impressive person I've ever met. Speaking of impressive women, you have two very impressive women in your life, uh, your wife of over 60 years and your executive assistant of what is it now, I believe, over 50 years now? Yeah, Maureen's been with me 57 years and I've been married 68 years. Right. So those two women in your life, can you maybe speak to how they've contributed to your success? Well, uh, I wouldn't be here without either one of them. I couldn't have had a better wife. Right. And Maureen came with me. Uh, very shortly after I got started in a gas station, we had a three-pump gas station, and Marines had a huge impact on the, 
this company, and uh, we wouldn't be here today without her. That's great. Um, what about your, your health? Can you share some tips on, on how you stay so healthy? Is there a Well, a I just thank the good Lord every night when I go to bed that <laughs> okay. I, got, uh, the, I have the health I've been blessed with. Right. There is no, there's no secret sauce. There's no, uh, no special Not that pill. I'm aware of. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, what was it? Uh, speaking of, of, you know, we're here on behalf of Pure Pharmacy. Um, looking at Pure Pharmacy as a brand, what was it that you saw in the brand that, that made you want to partner with them? Well... It was Bob, uh, Bob Muir, who who we were very impressed with and obviously brought something that we hadn't been exposed to before. Of course, right. In this business. Yeah. And we were hugely impressed with him Mm -hmm. and his wife and the vision that uh, he had for what he wanted to do and when he... uh, indicated he'd be interested in getting involved with us we were very pleased with the opportunity to get involved with bob and his team absolutely yeah um in terms as far as the pattison group goes do you have any your visions for for where you'd like to go next in terms of of well we do we have lots of uh, as the economy changes and technology changes Mm -hmm. we have to change with it absolutely and a lot of things that we've been in as the old economy and we have to move our company into more of the new things than that what got us here was a lot of the old businesses that everybody right. understood yeah uh, cars are a good example of it automobiles car dealerships mm-hmm. but that's all going to be very different in the next few years oh absolutely for sure um, we'd like to finish with a couple of rapid questions, so maybe okay. just some short answer questions. Shoot. Uh, again, of all the people you've met, who do you think's the best one to sit down with a beer with? I can't answer that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because you don't drink beer or because the... Well, because I've never sat down and had a beer with anybody that I can recollect. That's fair. Okay. okay. Um, how about your, your favorite car? My favorite car is a 75 Pontiac convertible I've had since new. Wow. Excellent. And you still drive that? I still drive it every summer. That's incredible. Um, your go-to snack? My, our go-to snack that we have is, is uh, today it was some grapes and, and goat cheese and some uh, crackers. Right. Well, I think that's the health thing right there. That's what, anyway, that's, that's what snack, I had today. That's great. Um, do you have, uh, how about a, a favorite song or favorite music group? Well, my favorite song are the old ones that I was raised with, the old hymns, right. and of course the old popular songs that, that I grew up with. That's great. Um, do you have a favorite Beatle? No. Okay. Uh, what, uh, what are you most proud of? What's the most proud thing you are, uh, the most proud you are of something in your life that you've accomplished? I think that I'm pleased that we're able to create as many jobs for people as we have for sure we've been very everybody we all need a job and we all have different skills and i'm just very grateful that that i live in a country and was born here that allowed people like us to build a business and create the jobs that help them with their families and our country and i'm pleased to be part of that that's, ex- that's excellent. Um, if you could choose any other career other than the one you have, would you choose one? I had to go into music. Music? <laughs> Follow up. That's a perfect segue into my next question. Can you still play the trumpet? I do. And you do play? Yeah, that's but not great. a lot, but well, okay. I still do on occasion. Fair enough. Uh, on the music topic, so I'm a, this is a long-winded question, but I'm, I'm a big fan of Jack Daniels, and someone else who's a big fan of Jack Daniels was Frank Sinatra. Right. And uh, I know you have a very close uh, close connection to him. Can you maybe well, describe that a little bit? Well, not any. We bought his compound from him in, okay. in uh, California in Palm Springs, and we've kept it exactly like we found it when I did the deal with Frank Sinatra. Right. Uh, we have kept the compound exactly as Frank had it when the day we bought it. That's great. Including his, his train room, I believe he has. Including all the trains. And the fellow that actually worked for Frank 
and did the train still works for us today wow. at the house. That's incredible. Um, and, and finally, Jim, our, the tagline to our podcast is living pure. So if I said, what is living pure to you? What do you think that means? I think of drugstores and Bob. Is that's living pure? Yeah. I mean, that's a, such a poetic ending. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate okay, this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.